Hey everyone. Um, so I'm in the first year of my doctoral program here with the ICON program, and I'm in the Warnell School of Forestry. My advisor is Gary Green. And for the next five minutes, I'm going to be talking to you about some of the ideas I've been generating, some of the research questions. Um, so first, one of the biggest questions that kind of introduces my topic is, what does it mean for a species to be iconic? And iconic species is a term that's already being used by groups. Um, and there's a slew of metaphors that go around iconic species that are similar. But I'm not sure if they're the same thing or when they're different or who decides which one is used. Um, some of these might be flagship species, um, umbrella species even can go into the social realm, things like that. And so I want to discern what these different metaphors mean exactly and how they might play um, in some conservation issues that surround the species that they're applied to. So if I break down that term a little more, an icon is a representative symbol. And it can be used in graphics or it can be used more as a metaphor in our discourse and our speech. Um, it can be used a metaphor a lot of times in marketing. However, when you apply it to an animal or a whole species, um, we, we know species have particular spatial distributions. And so that icon possibly could become a metaphor for a place. And in that way, um, species also have these culturally ascribed values that are applied to them. And these differ depending on uh, where in the world we're looking. Um, some of them might have a religious value in one place, but they have a market value. Um, they're a source of protein in another. And um, so when I combine all those ideas and look at species being used as a metaphor in this light, I'm kind of curious. Can iconic species have a certain type of value where they serve as a metaphor for a place? It's, I'm looking at this as possibly a type of existence value because um, the fact that they're there is a lot of that value as a symbol. There could be other historical uh, cultural factors that tie into it, but when they become iconic, perhaps it boils down to existence value. And so I'm curious about the case of sea turtles. There's a lot of interesting factors here that I want to explore. Uh, they have a wide range, so that's a range map of loggerhead. Um, but they're also very local at the same time. Um, they'll return to the same nesting beach over and over. Um, our coastlines are where we'll actually see them a lot of the time. But then there's that other point, do we actually see them? Um, it may not be so obvious to see the actual animal to a lot of the people that are aware of them, but we have this really high awareness of sea turtles. And then we have these uh, organizations and institutions that uh, surround sea turtles. We have the Georgia Sea Turtle Center on Jekyll Island, and we have a lot of citizen science programs up and down the Atlantic coast. And so I want to look at through a look at this place frame for uh, examining an iconic place value of sea turtles. And so place is a physical setting that we then embed with our experiences and our perceptions. And there's a lot of models out there that kind of tease apart these different elements of our sense of place. And I haven't quite decided which model I want to go with, but for now I'm starting with a very broad one, just looking at this three-part model, people, place, and processes. And I think that sea turtles can tie into a lot of these outer lying ideas. And so I want to see where it's, where it's tying in most prominent to give me a better idea of how it serves as an icon. And here's some of the specific research questions that I'm developing. Um, how can we measure iconicism? Are sea turtles actually iconic? That's something that I need to determine. Um, does an iconic value and an attachment to a particular species, native species, serve as a predictor of place attachment? Do we associate these things? Do they inform um, greater senses that we have? And then in the areas where sea turtles nest and um, are seen as icons, do the tourists there, the seasonal residents and the full-time residents have different feelings about the species and the place overall? 
based on those feelings. So that leads into some different research objectives. Uh, I'm interested in developing some sort of index to understand iconicism a little better because sometimes organizations just um, apply that label without really looking into it. And um, one way I'm thinking about this is a comparison of different values that we attribute um, perceived cultural, ecological, and economic values. And then I want to test relationships between some of these concepts, uh, iconicism, place attachment, and develop a model to understand how they may inform each other. And then I want to examine those differences between groups to see if the experience in a place, um, time spent there, the reasons you go there, have um, an influence on this model. And then my methods are gonna be mixed. Uh, I wanna use some qualitative open interviews to kinda understand the broad basis. And then to model those relationships, I'll be doing more quantitative surveys with scales that measure uh, sea turtle attachment and place attachment. And some of these implications are, well, a place, we see it as both <coughs> influenced by the physical features of the place and the social processes. And iconic species kind of cover both of those things. They're part of our environment, but they have a special significance in culture. So how may that fit into the previous literature concerning the separation of how we view place? And then what are the management decisions that affect sea turtles and how would those affect broader senses of place if I do find a significant relationship here? Mm -hmm. And then um, a lot of places that sea turtles are found also have a large tourism economy. So how do we need to consider that relationship when we uh, are worried about resident well-being, tourism economy, and the environmental behaviors and impacts of both groups of those people. And then kind of an integrated future for this idea. I'm also interested in how um, the management groups consider place when in their decision making processes. It can be a very vague thing sometimes. How do they uh, actualize the idea of place when they are making often quantitative decisions about uh, their resources? So that's all I have. Um, if anyone has any questions, I am open to them and suggestions. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Emily. So I love this idea. And one thing that might be kind of interesting is uh, thinking about social representations. And so that basically is saying that you would ask an individual that, hey, this is how your community is being uh, kind of marketed in a way or advertised and that would be like through this icon of a, of a sea turtle Do you agree with that and you could say because there's different ways that sea turtles are marketed, right? There could be that commodified really kind of corny way in which they're advertised or it could be more of an organic <coughs> way So you would see like at the sea turtle center on Jekyll Island So that could be another interesting way in which you could kind of gather people's acceptance of this actually being an icon that represents their community. Yeah, but yeah, that's great. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I think this is a great project too. It's fascinating. Thank you. One aspect that you might want to consider if you haven't already is the degree to which uh, a neighboring state might be more iconic for some of these species than others. Uh, you know, we, we obviously have sea turtles on the Georgia coast. Southeast Georgia is alive with alligators, but Florida, I think most people, you know, outside of these states will think of Florida before they think of Georgia for those things. So Florida is sort of like an iconicism magnet for some of those species. Um, so it's not that they're not, it's just, you know, this other state has, maybe has it going on more. Right, yeah, I'm definitely keeping that in mind. Um, I see that a lot, they have a lot more of those citizen science programs too, so that may be a factor in how yeah, I, that's a good point. yeah, plan that out. Yes? Yeah, I'm just wondering um, if you've given some thought to, so, uh, you know, I don't know about Jekyll Island so much, but, you know, there are places where sea turtle conservation is intensely political, leading even, you know, to people being murdered and so forth, mm -hmm. Costa Rica, places like that. Um, and I'm just, so, so both the idea of iconism and the idea of place attachment um, 
are, if, you know, I, I think you could you could say are, are potentially intensely political, and how you might get at that um, in in your research. All right, or, I'm. Through something comparative, or I don't know what. I'm interested, possibly in in a uh, cross cultural comparison because place attachment and iconic species attachment are not necessarily positive things. They can have negative sides to them. Yeah. <laughs> it's up to you. Yeah, really quick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. look at how icons change over time because the Sea Turtle Center was started just in like 2006, I think, or five. And, um, it's interesting to think of how perceptions have changed since then. Yeah, I would love to figure out a way to look at, at the temporal aspect because we used to you know, consume them here and it, that's gone out of favor and how has that shifted different values that we see. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna